tried to write this poem about 30 years ago when I first decided I wanted to be a poet. I walked out of university that very day and uh, I got a little notebook and a pack and walked all around New Zealand. And uh, one of the things I decided to do was to walk all the way from Palmerston North because I was working in the freezing works at the time, right up to uh, Te Reinga, Spirits Bay. That's where, um, I suppose everybody goes to heaven, but if you're Māori, we go to Hawaii. And when we die, our spirits travel up the island to Cape Te Reinga. And there's a cliff there with a pahutakoa tree growing out the side of the cliff. And um, the spirits climb out along the pahutakoa tree and dive down into the sea and go back to Hawaii. So I thought I would do that. I would go up there and I'd climb along the cliff and I'd climb down the cliff and I'd go along that tree and look down to the place where the spirits returned to Hawaii. And uh, when I got there, I crawled out a little bit away uh, uh, along the cliffs and the sea was about 150 feet or something below me going whoom, whoom. and I looked down and I thought, well, this is as far as I go. I'm not going to climb down along that tree and have a look. I'll wait for 80 years and then I'll come back and I'll, <laughs> I'll go down. But I didn't get the poem until last year when I finally worked it out what the poem was that I wanted to write. On the road to Te Reringa Wairua, dust billows from beneath the tourist bus as it hurries by to the leaping off place of the spirits. It almost flattens me, smothering me in carbon monoxide, choking me with dust as I walk the path of our tipuna. I can't hear the sea because of the chug-a-chug-chug of the bus's motor and the rolling R's of American I got. I gotta get me some of that dirt, Sam. Then back into the bus they clamber and are off in a puff of dust and smoke, having seen little, not knowing to wait in silence with patience. Then you understand the meaning of the word mana. Then you see our dead gathering like clouds in the sky, slipping quietly from the tree into the sea, and you farewell them with love and tears like the falling rain. The Magpies When Tom and Elizabeth took the farm, the bracken made their bed, and quaddle doodle addle waddle doodle the magpies said. Tom's hand was strong to the plough, Elizabeth's lips were red, and quaddle doodle addle waddle doodle the magpies said. Year in, year out, they worked while the pines grew overhead. And quaddle doodle addle waddle doodle, the magpies said. But all the beautiful crops soon went to the mortgage man instead. And quaddle doodle addle waddle doodle, the magpies said. Elizabeth is dead now, it's years ago. Old Tom went light in the head. And quaddle doodle addle waddle doodle, the magpies said. The farm's still there. Mortgage corporations couldn't give it away. And quaddle doodle addle waddle doodle, the magpies say.
Threnody. In Plymouthton, in Plymouthton, the little penguins play, and one dead albatross was found at Carihana Bay. In Plymouthton, in Plymouthton, the seabirds haunt the cave, and often in the summertime the penguins ride the wave. In Plymouthton, in Plymouthton, the penguins live, they say. But one dead albatross they found at Carihana Bay. Exploding Light Let that one exploding light move out over us Define the landscape. In spring, there's peat bog heaped up. New mountains appear on Paikakariki Beach. Tane Mahuta distributing packages. Old God come in again from Whanganui. Children tumble through the wooded sea. Draw the cold ocean through their nostrils. Spit into the soup where life spills over the jugular horizon. Fourteen-year-old boy men splay themselves at the reaches, cough and shout at the sea, get lippy to a bigger sound, enjoy the early splash of a returning tide, good dogs in a gentle season. Girls laugh and screech, hidden in their togs, stretched outward and waiting, gulls circle. Back at the house, they tell stories, and he was trying to kiss her, and her little sister whacked him with her towel, and he ran away. <laughs> and he ran all the way to heaven, his own pulse driving him, harder than the manic cadence of all the girls burning. I keep hearing rain in the gutters. Reach down, inside every love is the slap of fluid and salt tongues, new songs in drifts, dresses, Pew pew and swaying fibres. Eartha Kitt says, You're sweet, my dear, like a girl that's never been kissed. That's right. The band plays on at fever pitch, full of light and angled rhythms and gorgeous chaos flung at our feet. Rimbo never booked a single ticket. He just kept the door open. Water floods in. Patterns keep heaping up. Laid over each other, every body that ever bled in summer, bark stripped back to show love's new skin, glowing. We recognize ourselves, every broken piece, the children we once were. Oh, I'm on Paikakariki on the Kapli coast, just out of Wellington. And this is an important place for me to stop because right around this area, right down this coast, is a whole lot of fascinating people with a real connection and a real interest in the railways. I ran towards the thing, waving wildly, slipped and fell on ballast and sleepers. I could hear my screams as the iron wheels of the steadily slowing engine and the rails on which it ran cut my life in two. Now, Michael, tell me about books and trains. Well, um, both have been a big part of my life for many years. Um, I've written four novels, and uh, each one of them begins and ends on the train, so um, they're quite significant things in the literature that I write. And you had an hour escape from a train? Yeah, when I was about uh, five years old, um, my mother was pregnant with our sister and uh, I got ahead of her and fell on, on between the platform onto the rails. And uh, my, the guard had given the whistle to uh, go, you know, and uh, my mother screamed out. And, but I, for many years afterwards, couldn't go near a train, you know, and uh, in, in my 20s, I got a job on the railways to overcome my fear of trains, and 
And it worked. It worked so well. <laughs> <laughs> worked too well. My whole bloody life's about training now. I'm, I'm not an, a train enthusiast, you know. I don't get into the, the hobby aspect of it. I like working railway, you know, and being able to catch a train where I'm going rather than, rather than sort of doing up old engines and things like that, you know.